Hi folks, Jason Webster here. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Inside PTI. Today we're going to talk about multi-genetic planting. Now what in the world is multi-genetic planting? Well, multi-genetic planting is simply this, planting the most appropriate genetics on every acre. This way we can match its environment and maximize production potential. Think about this. We know we have better soils than others, but no matter the, the soil type, we want to maximize production on every acre that we have. So to understand this, we have to think about soil variability. How much do you have or do you have soil variability on your farm? As we traveled the winter on the PTI Farm Winter Tour in January, February, and March, we asked growers on your farming operation, do you have soil variability? Do you have changes in soil type, soil texture, or water holding capacity? And of all the growers we talked to, nearly 2,000 farmers in this particular survey, 96% of farmers said they did have or they do have soil variability. 4% said they were flat, black, and beautiful, if you will, and didn't have any variability. But this shows you that a lot of farmers have to address changes in soil type and yield potential on their farm. So this raises the question of if we have soil variability and differences in soil types, how do you plant the right genetics on the right acre if your soil types are changing? I had this question in my head years ago. I'll take you back and tell you a little bit of a story. 2008, I'm planting one of my farms on our family farming operation. And it's probably our worst farm uh, that we have. It's an 80-acre farm. It's got lots of elevation changes on the hills. It's just a tight clay. All the topsoil is washed off down into the bottoms. The bottoms are pretty good dirt because, again, that's where all the good topsoil went uh, years ago. But... I just don't have enough of those good acres. I've got good soil on the farm. I just don't have a high percentage of good acres on the farm. So one day I'm, I'm planting my corn and I got the auto steer on and the planter tractor and I look back at the planter and I say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm up on one of the hilltops. I'm up on the, one of the tough soils of my farm. I look back at the planter and say the corn hybrid that I've got, I've got loaded in the planter right now isn't perfect for this soil type right here. And sometimes the answer was no, a little frustrating. I get down, you know, I go down the bottom of the hill and I get into, oh, some of the, what some folks would call the ice cream dirt, right? You know, the really good soils. You know, and those are what I have to, have to do a good job farming on. You know, those are gonna give me high yield and so I need to treat them a little bit differently. But I'd look back at the planter and when I'm planting those acres, and a lot of times I'd be locked and loaded with a defensive corn because such a high percentage of the farm was rough and tough dirt, and I never felt like I could plant more of an offensive, higher-yielding corn because of that fact. And I simply got frustrated. I got tired of it. And so I parked, parked the, the, the planter tractor. I just parked it alongside the road. I climbed into my pickup truck. I drove home to the office. I got my checkbook, and I drove to John Deere, my local John Deere dealer. I drove to my local Case IH dealer. I drove to my local Kinsey dealer. And I got my checkbook out and I said, boys, I said, I'd like to buy a multi-genetic corn planter today. And I go to start writing the check out and all, you know, the John Deere guy, the Case IH guy and the Kinsey guy said, whoa, wait a minute here. There's no such thing as a multi-genetic corn planter. And so we talked with all the planter companies about why we wanted a multi-genetic corn planter, you know, to address soil variability, to plant the right genetics on the right acre. And all of them kind of laughed at me and said, there's nothing like this available. And as I walked out of, of the dealerships, a lot of them would say, hey, Jason, before you leave, if you do some testing on multi-genetic planning, let us know because we'd really like to see the results. It, it sounds interesting to us. And so I remembered that and, and we kind of went to work on this thing. And, and the, the picture you see on the screen right now is, is the first multi-genetic corn planter that we put in the ground in 2012. We set this planter up to start gathering agronomic data to see if multi-genetic planting could offer yield increases and, and return on investment. And so we simply started with a Kinsey 815 splitter planter. You guys know what, what kind of planters these are. We've got eight row, row units in the back and on this 815 we've got seven in the front. 
we had to cut this planter in half virtually and, and add another row unit up front. So we had eight units on the back, eight units on the front. We set this planter up with hydraulic motors. Here's how we, here's how we did this. I went to, at the time I was working for a seed company and we were passionate about, you know, recommending the right corn hybrids and soybean varieties on the right acre. And so I, I drove to precision planting, believe it or not. And I said, I, I'm going to make a multi-genetic corn planter and I need your guys' technology, your guys' equipment to do this. Here's how we set it up. The back eight rows of this, this Kinsey um, multi-genetic planter. We, we always intended the back eight rows to be our offensive row unit. So on our good acres, we're going to paint, uh, plant a more offensive corn hybrid, one appropriate for, for higher yielding areas in these eight boxes. These eight boxes are tied to a hydraulic motor that goes to a 2020 in the cab of this John Deere tractor. Okay, and that's how we're going to drive this thing. Now, the front eight rows are driven by another hydraulic motor and another 2020 monitoring the cab of that tractor. And it's designed to plant in my rough and tough acres. We're not going to put an offensive corn hybrid in those front eight boxes. We're going to put more of a workhorse or more of a defensive uh, corn hybrid for those, quote, quote, stress acres. But as we travel through the field, these sets of eight rows would turn on and off depending on the soil type that we were planting into. Now, you'll see two sets of eight rows and I, you know they're, they're soil engaging all, all of the time, but I couldn't have them running in the same furrow. I, that, I thought that would be too destructive and that would cause some challenges. So what, what I did was we just created a, a twin row planter and this is what it looked like when the corn came up. You know, think about the eight, you know, the, the set of eight rows turning on and off in a twin row fashion. We just moved them over eight inches. And this is what it looked like in the field at our transitions. And at first, I kind of like this because there's a reason we're changing corn hybrid in this particular area. And it's probably because of soil type changes. And I wanted to ground truth that I wanted to confirm it. And so I could simply look down and look at the, look at the, um, offset here and decide whether I was right. If it wasn't right, I could make some adjustments on, on the script. But the challenge with this was, as we, you know, with lots of variability in the field, you're always moving over eight inches with this transition. And what that did was it left a wide row on one side of the planter and a pinch row on the other side. And it caused some problems when we would come in to spray or to side dress or to harvest. And a lot of you guys run auto steer when you're planting. I thought, well, you know, maybe we just create a, an auto nudge on our auto steer system. So when we change hybrid, the, the AB line for our auto steer would automatically change. There was no way of getting that into a software system. And so we tried to be somewhat creative when we first started doing this. We said, you know what? Our AB line on our GPS, our auto steer system, is based on where the GPS receiver is at on the roof of the cab of the tractor. So I said, well, that's easy. Every time we change corn hybrids, let's just move the GPS receiver to do the automatic nudge for us. And uh, this worked. It was very you know, inexpensive to do. The problem is to move eight inches, it took about 13 seconds to move the tractor over. You see the GPS receiver moving, you know, you'd hear the monitor beep in the cab that we changed hybrids in, and then that GPS receiver would move and that tractor would just move over eight inches as a result. But it took a long time. It took about 13 seconds to move the eight, eight inches and we ended up with this curve and it looked just a little ugly in, in the field. I said, we can do better with this. That's, I mean, this is, a, this is a, a Trimble 372 receiver on a Case IH tractor. Uh, this is an actuator we put on it to move really quick. And this video is, is kind of jumbly just because I'm, I'm on the ladder of the tractor taking this video. But, but you're in the cab of this tractor, the, the, you know, the monitor beeps at you when you change hybrid. And then this GPS receiver moves so quickly, it would almost jerk your neck over a little bit. But you feel that tractor you know, move over to make the adjustment for that twin row corn. But the reason I'm showing you this is we did things to test multi-genetic corn planting that no farmer should ever have to do. But we did it to collect the agronomic data to see if we could actually increase yield and show some of the planter companies whether this would be useful for farmers. And I'll never forget in 2014 at Winter Conference at Precision Planning, Precision Planning released VSET Select. And th this was a multi-genetic planning system where 
we had single row dual meter technology. So on every row unit, you had two meters, two crop kits, and two V drives. And this allowed us to change hybrids based on, um, based on soil variability in the field. Now look at this. You know, here's your two meters. One's turning clockwise, one's turning counterclockwise. Both of these meters are still dropping seed into the same seed tube. It's just either one on or one off. We color code them blue and orange here because we can simply go to the hoppers of the planter. And here's, the C, here's a picture of CCS tanks. On our farm, the orange is always the more offensive type corn. The blue is always the defensive. But we can tell the 2020 what tank to pull out of and plant. We simply go to the 2020, we can put our seeding rates in, so we can even do variable rate seeding with this, but we color code it to pull seed out of whatever tank we want to allow us to do the multi-genetic planting. It was really quite simple. In 2017, it got better. MSET came out. This eliminated the need for the second meter. Now we can do it with one meter, which brought the cost down, okay? And it also allowed us to put a speed tube on the bottom of this meter, so now growers could do multi-genetic planting as well as high-speed planting. Now we can take our soil variability, we can make a script, and we can go in and effectively plant the right genetics on the right acre. Here's some results from 2022 from the PTI farm where we isolated you know, the better soils from the tough soils and we positioned corn hybrids both ways to prove you know, if we do this thing right, can we increase yield? And look at the, the, the yellow on the, on the map here, on the, on, the, on the screen. It shows our defensive zones. These are the tough areas of the farm. This is where you don't want to go in and put an offensive hybrid here. You're just going to set yourself up for failure. We position a workhorse or a defensive hybrid on those acres. And look, we picked up 16.6 .6 bushel. It's six-dollar corn. That's a hundred-dollar winner, folks. That changed farm family revenue by hundred dollars an acre. Now look at the good ground, the green on the, on the screen. This is where we, we go in and we say, all right, we're going to put a top gun in here. We're going to put an offensive corn hybrid to really take advantage of those good soils and go all out for yield. This is not where you want to put a defensive hybrid in. This is where you're going to lose yield potential. We picked up 12 bushel in this scenario, and you look at $6 corn, that's a $72 winner. So we did pretty well in 2022 on average. That's a 14.3 bushel corn yield gain. And you look at the dollars per acre, that's an $85 winner. It actually made our top 10. We keep track of the things that make us the most money in the, on the farm. And this was number seven in our top 10 list of winners at $85.80 an acre. So it did pretty well for us this year in, in 2022. All right, let's look at long-term results. We've been studying multi-genetic corn planting for the uh, five years we've been here at the PTI farm. And look at the results here. On the tough soils, we're averaging 12.1 bushel yield gains. Look at the dollars on this. This is a $50 winner, $53.19 to be exact. You go to the good ground, right? The high productive soils, you know, we're, we're picking up over 10 bushel yield gains. That's a $42 winner. The, the point is that right now we're averaging 11.3 bushel gains and $47.84 of a win rate. Now, let's talk about win rate. You'll see some red text on the screen right now. The red text means sometimes I didn't get it right. I didn't choose the right corn hybrid, in this case corn, corn hybrid for the right acre. I got it wrong. But think about your win ratio on your farm. What is your win rate? How many times did you plant the right corn hybrid on the right acre? I don't think anybody knows that win rate percentage. I know right now I've got a win rate of 80% and I've got a losing rate of 20%. Huh, I'll take an 80% win rate and, and I'll bet on that to win. Ladies and gentlemen, farming is risk. And what this is, is somewhat insurance. If I can isolate my soils and figure out how to optimize production, I can simply come in here and plant the right genetics very easily to pick up a $50 win. That's how I'm looking at it. That's my five-year data, 11.3 bushel yield increase on corn, and I'm making 50 bucks an acre, $47.84 to be exact. But we're moving the needle here. We're, we're increasing farm family revenue by nearly $50 an acre by simply planting the right corn hybrids on the right acre. 
What about soybeans? You know, we've, we did all kinds of research on soybeans. We kind of, or on corn, we, we kind of forgot about soybeans to a degree. I, but I'm excited about soybeans, doing multi-variety soybean planting. I think this is going to work out great. You know, there's a crop consulting company, a major crop consulting company in the Midwest that's actually doing some work trying to identify where yield is coming from on certain soybean varieties. Okay, now some soybean varieties are going to get most of their yield from the main stem where other soybean varieties have lateral branching along with the main stem to give a shield. Now, let me, let me show you this. So look at the, the, the beans on the right. You look at the architecture of that soybean plant, it's basically all main stem. That's where their yield's coming from, from all of those nodes and all of those pods on that main stem. However, go to the green plant on the, on the left. Look at, not only does it have a main stem, but it has these lateral branches that has additional nodes and additional soybeans on them. Now, how are you going to place these soybeans? Now, let me ask you a question. If you plant the, the green soybean on the screen here, the one with the lateral branches, if you put that type of a soybean potentially on your roughest soils, Okay, your lowest producing soils, and you go, you, the rain shuts off, you go into stress mode, you go into drought mode. This soybean plant, where is it going to give up so, the soybean yield first? Are we going to start having beans disappearing from the branches or on the main stem? Well, when we go under stress, we're going to start blasting those beans off of those branches first, and we're going to keep those on the main stem. We'll lose those later. So now if we can understand where the yield is coming from on these soybeans, now we can place them according to soil variability much better. And this crop consulting company that's doing some work on this is having some success. And I said, well, wait a minute. I said, based on your research of knowing how to plant, you know, place these soybean varieties on certain soil types, what kind of yield increase do you think we could see with this? And they're telling me quite easily four to 10 bushel of extra soybeans on a per acre basis. And I said, all right, let's just take the low number here. Let's take four bushel to the acre. And at $14 beans, that's a $56 winner. You look at the cost of MSET, which is our single meter on, on, a, on a planter row unit. It's about $600 in cost. On a 16 row planter, you'd have a cost of about $9,600. But if you do the math on this, based on that $56 or that four bushel improvement in yield, our break even is gonna occur at only 171 acres. That's it, 171 acres. And you could have this MSET multi-variety soybean planting paid off on only 171 acres. It, it, it's incredible to me. And again, we, we've talked about this all winter long. We've talked about this on Inside PTI episodes. When we make an investment on the farm, I want that technology to go to work for me. Go to work for me. Make me money. And this one's making me money fairly quickly with getting a break even at only 171 acres in this particular situation. So I'm excited about some of the work that's being done on identifying how soybeans need to be placed on certain soils, and then we can take the precision planting technology and actually implement it in the field. And I think there's some low-hanging fruit, there's some dollars per acre that we could capture pretty easily. So today's Inside PTI agronomy tip of the day is, if you as a grower have soil variability on your farms, how do you plant the most appropriate genetics on every acre to maximize yield? Multi-genetic planting is the only way to plant the right hybrid or variety on the right acre. Our PTI farm results would indicate corn yield to 11.3 bushel per acre in soybeans of up to four bushel per acre with both crops netting returns near $50 an acre. We talk about this all the time at the PTI farm. What can you do to make an extra $50 on your farm? And I'm not talking about slashing crop inputs, not putting fertilizer on, things like that. I'm talking about farming smarter. And if you have soil variability, this is a way to farm smarter and plant the right genetics on the right acre. Well, that's all the time we have for today's episode of Inside PTI. If you have any questions about anything we've talked about today, shoot me an email at InsidePTI at PrecisionPlanning.com or by all means, stop by and visit your local Precision Planning Premier dealer. They'd love to talk with you about this technology as well. We'll see you on the next episode of Inside PTI. Thanks for watching.